What's up guys, this is Hunter with the Dial H4 HeroClix crew and I'm back with a rules explanation video. I want to cover today Winter Soldier from the Captain America the Winter Soldier set. Specifically 008 Winter Soldier from the main set, not the starter. Because uh, he has a really interesting trait that has a lot of rules questions that come up about it. And he's a pretty good and pretty fun piece to play, so I figure that a lot of people are going to be playing him over the next few weeks at your venues. So I figured I'd make this video, answer some questions that are likely to come up during your uh, games, and also teach you why certain things are ruled the way that they are. Let's start off by reading his trait, called Sniper's Nest, and kind of go over it step by step. Once per game, give Winter Soldier a power action, Place three Sniper's Nest terrain markers on the map, and place Winter Soldier in one of these squares. So, that's pretty simple enough, right? All you need is, you know, granted, the first thing I want to note about that is it's once per game, give them a power action, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do this right at the very beginning of the match. In fact, and we'll get into tactics later at the end, but I suggest not to use the sniper's nest until uh, mid mid early game um, but anyways when you do decide to do it you give him a power action and no matter where he is on the map the three sniper's nest that you place can be anywhere that you choose they don't have to be within so many squares of him they don't have to be adjacent so we can place one up there this map doesn't want to stay one up here and one kind of out in the middle of everything all right, so we got that, that step down. When he occupies one of these markers, oh, and place him in one. So after we do the power action, we choose which one we want to put him in. When he occupies one of these markers, he can use ranged combat expert. Lines of fire can't be drawn to him, and he may not be given actions except power actions to use ranged combat expert. Now let's pause there and go over that because that's a big part of this. He can't be given any actions except to activate ranged combat expert. What that means is he can't use, um, if you had a way of giving him perplex, he can't use it. Even though perplex is a free action, uh, his trait doesn't say you can't use non-free actions. It says you can't use actions. That's any action at all except for ranged combat expert while you're in one of the nests. You do get to use his damage power, but you'll notice that when you read the damage power, it is not an action. It does not require an action at any point. It's just an, a game effect. And I'll read it for you. I have my orders. At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6. On a 5 or 6, remove an action token from Winter Soldier. So as you see, there, in no point in there did it say, give Winter Soldier a free action, blah, 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 blah. So he can still use that. But... Any other power, like mid-dial, he has running shot, psychic blast, you can't use that. Nothing but range combat expert, even if it's a free action. The very, the only other thing he really can use is theme team prob control. And you're going to have trouble even getting him on a theme team since they changed the rules and now generic themes don't get theme team props. And if you notice, all of his keywords are generic. The only way really to turn him into a, uh, to get him on a theme team is if you ran two of the Gravity Feed Welcome to the Legion trait members with him and made him a Legion member, or if you played him with Doug's Army, since uh, Winter Soldier does have the Soldier keyword, he would qualify for Doug's Army if you built a team around that. So if you were running one of those two, you could in fact give him theme team probs, since again, prob control uh, is not an action. It, it is not a free action. It's just a game effect. Or if you had some other crazy way of giving him prop control, um, say in, in the Infinity Gauntlet. Say that he had the Infinity Gauntlet on him and the, the gym was showing for prob on his turn. He could use that. Once per turn, you may place Winter Soldier in the square of a different one of his sniper nest markers. That's simple enough. Don't need to explain that. When in a pose, and a notice again, that's not a free action. It's just something that happens, so he's allowed to do that. When an opposing character becomes adjacent to one of these markers, roll a d6 that cannot be re-rolled. On a result of one or two, place Winter Soldier in the square of a different sniper nest. 
on a three to six, remove the marker, and if Winter Soldier occupies that square, place him in another of his sniper nest markers if there's one on the map. Now this is the big thing that we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna cover lots of different situations with this. But I'm gonna put these out here easily to see for you. And we're gonna go over the steps of how this, this would trigger. So let's start with a grounded character like Captain America, Smoky Foot Cap here. Keep it thematic with Captain America and Winter Soldier. So typically this is in a very, this. let's do the simplest form of this triggering. Cap wants to move up on Winter Soldier's square. He moves here right next to Winter Soldier's map. He now stops mid-action. This happens in the middle of the action. We check when an opposing character becomes adjacent to one of these markers. Check. We got that part. Roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled. We got that part. He rolled a 6. Uh, roll a d6 can be rolled. On a result of 1 or 2, we could have placed Winter Soldier in a different sniper nest, but we didn't. We rolled a 3 to 6, so we removed the marker, so that's gone for the rest of the game. And if Winter Soldier occupies that square, he does, place him in another of his sniper nest markers if there's one on the map. So he could warp to either one of these. Now, let's say that Winter Soldier was actually here. Is Cap allowed to move to one of these empty nests and trigger that? Yes, it doesn't specify that, that the nest that you're moving to has to have him in it. So let's say that Cap instead went up on this one. Let's go through the part of the trait. When an opposing character becomes adjacent to one of these markers, check. Roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled. Five. On a three to six, remove the marker. And if Winter Soldier occupies that square, no he doesn't, so we, don't, we ignore the rest of the ability. But we got rid of one of his markers. So one of the things you can do is just go up to the markers, whether he's in them or not, to try to get rid of them, or to try to make him move around. Because let's say that in that situation, we moved adjacent, and we roll our d6, and it instead landed on a 1 or 2. On a result of 1 or 2, place Winter Soldier in the square of a different one. So we just made him move. Even though we didn't move up on him, we made him move because he rolled a 1 or 2. So he has to either go here and be based and screwed, or over here closer to us. Place him in the square of a different one of his sniper nest markers. So that's how it's going to play out in, in a normal setting most of the time. But what I want to talk about is go over the two big parts of his trait, which is the line of fire part and the destroying the nest part. And go over different situations that are likely to come up at your venue and explain what happens and why it happens that way. All right, how does Winter Soldier's trait interact with characters that ignore stealth, like characters with the Superman team out, uh, ally team ability, as you see there with 001 Superman? Well, stealth reads, lines of fire drawn to this character are blocked when it's not your turn. But when we read Winter Soldier's trait, we see that this is worded actually totally differently. When he occupies one of these markers, he can use RCE, lines of fire can't be drawn to him. So, as you see, we are not blocking the line of fire. We can't even try, we can't even attempt to draw a line of fire to him. So it does not matter if you can see through stealth or not. You're not, you're not unblocking a line of fire. You can't even attempt to draw the line of fire in the first place. Now let's, in a very similar vein, but a little more specific, let's take a character who has a specially worded um, seeing through squares type power. Let's take Smoky Foot Cap instead, and let's see how that a power like this would interact with Winter Soldier. This is Cap 040. Deflection, deflection trajectory. Captain America's line of fire is blocked only by walls and indoor blocking. Now when you first read that you might think, oh I can, I can sh hit Winter Soldier. You can't because again, it says his line of fire is blocked only by blah blah blah. We are not blocking the, the, the terrain is not blocking his line of fire. 
Captain America cannot even try to draw a line of fire to us in the first place so that his special power does not kick in at all. So any powers that are worded similar to Captain America's, it's not going to matter. You, can't, you cannot see Winter Soldier when he's in a nest. Now you ask, what are the, the, that seems pretty dang good. You know, what is the bad side of this? Well, the bad side, in my opinion, is you cannot, your friendly characters cannot perplex or prob control the Winter Soldier. Why? Because he, and he can't even prob himself, actually, if you think about it, because he can't draw a line of fire to the square to himself. So that's a negative. You know, you can't even see the, see the guy. It, whether it's friendly or not. It doesn't say, is, is you know, opposing characters can't draw a line of fire. It just says other characters can't draw a line of fire. So that's one negative to it, is that you can't perp or prob him. That also means you can't TK him. So if you wanted to get him out of a nest, if somebody based him and trapped him in a nest, you cannot TK him out back to safety. So that's another, you know, another downside of it. The other downside that's really left is that he can still be pulse-waved. And the reason he can still be pulse waved is because his trait doesn't specify that it cannot be ignored. And whenever you follow the steps of pulse wave, the pulse wave, the part of pulse wave that ignores all game effects, kicks in before you actually draw a line of fire to the character. Or actually, it's in the same exact sentence, so it so it kicks in at the same exact time. It's separated by a semicolon, so it's all the same part of the steps of the action. So if you have Pulse Wave and Winter Soldier is within range, you can, in fact, Pulse Wave him even when he's in a sniper's nest. So that's something to keep in mind during the game. All right, now let's answer all of the moving adjacent questions that will come up. Some very common ones are going to be, how does this interact with charge and how does it interact with hypersonic speed? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, let's take an example. Charge is going to be more effective the least uh, sniper's nest that he has. Um, but let's first do if he has all of his nests and let's see how that pans out for him. So we charge in, we move, now mid-action, his trait kicks in. An opposing character moved adjacent, so the opposing character has to roll. The opposing character rolled a 3 to 6. So we remove the marker, and if Winter Soldier has more squares, he can get away. So he got away. Now we, fin we resolve our charge. Is there a target to attack? No. So we can't hit Winter Soldier. If there was another character somewhere next to it, we could go ahead and hit them. But Winter Soldier got away. But let's say that we had destroyed his uh, Ness already. And this is his last one. So we charge up on the dude. An, oppo an opposing character became adjacent. Check. Roll 1d6. That can't be re-rolled. One or two. On a result of one or two, place Winter Soldier in the square of a different one of his Sniper's Nest markers. We can't do that because there is no other Sniper's Nest marker. So now Winter Soldier is stuck here, and we get to punch him in his face. Now what's the glorious thing about the fact that he just rolled one to two in his last nest? Winter Soldier is in a nest now, and he can take no other actions except for Range Combat Expert while he's in a nest. Notice... He does not have Sharpshooter. So now Winter Soldier has to sit here and be a punching bag for Superman. As long as Superman doesn't move away and move back to, to trigger that trait to see if this nest gets destroyed, Winter Soldier is now stuck in this nest and can do absolutely nothing because all he can do is range combat expert and he does not have Sharpshooter. So if you, this is the best case scenario for playing against the Winter Soldier is to trap them in a nest like that. How does, what, how does it interact with hypersonic speed? Well, pretty much the same exact way. Hypersonic speed, we fly around, we stop, we move to adjacent, we roll. Let's say this time he rolls a, a 3 to 6 just to make it a little different. Um, on a 3 to 6, remove the marker. And if Winter Soldier occupies that square, place him in another of the sniper's nest if there is one on the map. There is no one on the map. He's still stuck here, so we still get to punch him in the face and then go wherever we want. But in this situation, he now lost his nest. So after he gets hit in the face, let's say he does survive a hit from S Superman and goes on his bottom clicks. 
he can now retaliate and do things other than range combat expert because he's not in a nest. So hopefully if you're playing Winter Soldier and you only have one nest left, when they move up on you, you roll a three to six so that the marker gets removed and then you can do other things instead of sitting there being a, a punching bag, basically. Something entertaining that may happen while you're playing, actually it already has happened in the first game I've ever seen with him, is let's say we charged up on the square, let's say that Winter Soldier has two nests left, and we charge up on this square. And now let's read it straight. We became adjacent, we roll the one the one D six, and we roll a one or two. On a result of one or two, place Winter Soldier in the square of a different one of his sniper nests. The only one he has left is this one. That's it. Now it's over. Now we go back and check. Does Superman have a target to close combat attack? Yes. Now we get to punch him in the face. So we basically teleported Winter Soldier over here so that we could smack him in the face. So that's something that's also probably going to come up while you're playing. So that's something to keep in mind playing against him is it's worth it to move up on the empty nest. Don't just focus on the one that he's on. Go up on the on the empty nest and try to really screw over Winter Soldier's plan and his positioning. Um, another thing that might happen is you can occupy these nests. If if the something happens and the nest doesn't get destroyed, you can stand on these nests with your other characters. And then now when somebody else moves up on Winter Soldier, he's stuck there. Because no matter what he rolls, he can't, there is no, uh, he can't break the rule of occupan occupancy. So he cannot teleport to one of his other squares. He's stuck there, and so now you can attack him if you move next to him. And the other basic thing I want to mention before I get into specific examples is when you have a character that ignores characters on movement. Well, every flyer in the game ignores characters on movement if they are not starting out based. Um, or if they just have improved movement, ignore characters, then they do that regardless of if they're based or not. But let's take Superman again, who is of course a flyer, and let's start him out here. Superman, during his movement, can easily bust all three of these nests just in one movement, and probably punch Winter Soldier in the face at the end of it, to be totally honest. So let's see how that would happen. Uh, Superman has an 11 movement. He starts his first step. Let's check the trait. When an opposing character becomes adjacent, check. Roll a d6. We rolled a 6. On a 3 to 6, remove the marker. And if Winter Soldier occupies that square, no he does not, so it's over. Now, we still have 10 movement left. So we fly over, 1, 2, and we just trigger this again. It doesn't say that this trait only kicks in once per turn on the when an opposing character becomes adjacent part. So you can keep triggering this as much as you want. So let's say on this point we uh, we move up and we roll a one or two. All right. On a result of one to two, place Winter Soldier in the square of a different one of his markers. So he goes over here. Okay. Now at this point we can either punch him or we can move over and destroy this and roll up and have a chance to destroy this one. We became adjacent. We roll. We roll a five. We remove it from the map. We still have six movement left. So then we move up on this one. We roll. He's now stuck in the nest. And we punch him in the face and he cannot retaliate. So that's one example. Another example is if you don't succeed at first, try, try again. We have a flyer with 11 movement. We move up on the first square. Let's move this way over here. We move up on the first one. And when we roll, Winter Soldier gets lucky. And we roll a one or two. He chooses, of course, to go away from Superman and to go over there. We can still keep trying to destroy this. So we moved one, we moved two, three. Roll again. Now we destroyed it. Now we can go over to this one. So as you see, you can try on the same nest multiple times. You can try on the same, on all the nests multiple times in the same movement. All you need is ignores characters. So that way, if, you're, if your goal is to destroy the nest, you can move up while he's there and not get stuck. So any flyer can really wreak havoc on Winter Soldier if he doesn't place his nest intelligently. Three more questions here. These are more specific, but I have actually seen this first one already happen in a match. 
if we have a nest that's on the top of the stairs or on the bottom, either vice versa, it would work the same way. And a character charges up, say Superman charges up, to here at the bottom of the stairs. Would this tr trigger Winter Soldier's trait where he could try to get away before Superman punches him? And the answer is no. It does not. It doesn't because these two squares are not considered adjacent. They are considered adjacent when you go to make an attack. And I'll read that to you here out of the rule book here on page 14 of uh, this is, yeah, this 2014 rule book, the brand new one. So on page 14, characters occupying the two squares through which a character can change elevations can make close combat attacks against each other as if they were adjacent. It's only considering the squares adjacent when you go to make an attack. But when a character, when we moved up, we didn't trigger it. So when we go to make the attack, it's not triggering the trait. We can just straight punch him in the face and he doesn't get a chance to get away to one of his other nests. So if you're playing Winter Soldier, do not put one at the top of the stairs. Don't be an idiot. Um, that's about all I have to say, because even if you just moved it right there, now Superman has to move up here, and then when he moves, he became adjacent through moving, and then that would trigger the trait. But if you put it at the top of the stairs, he can move up here and punch you without triggering your trait. Second question. If we have a character that has giant reach, like this big giant ass that you can't even see on the camera because he's huge, Phoenix Buster Iron Man, who has Giant Reach. How does Giant Reach interact with this situation? Whether it's on inter elevated or not, let's take it off elevated just to show you that it works in any situation. When he goes to Giant Reach someone, could you reach across here and punch him without triggering the adjacency? Typically, and in my mind at first, I thought, yes, it wouldn't trigger it. But here's the problem. When we read uh, the wording on Giant Reach from the 2014 PAC, there's one part in here that makes his trait trigger. When this character is given an action that includes a close combat attack, all squares within a range of two and line of fire are considered adjacent, period. So what's the difference between this and the stairs one? Well, in the stairs one, it said considered adjacent for close combat attacks. So it's only considered adjacent when you're talking about attacking. This is saying when you go to attack, all are considered adjacent, period, point blank, period. So now when you go to punch Winter Soldier, he does get to trigger his trait. So just something that to keep in mind if this happens. And then the third question is what happens when you TK someone up to the square? Can I TK somebody up here and then hit him without giving him a chance for his trait to go off? So let's give uh, Cap there the uh, TK shard, Emma shard, and he TKs Superman up here. Does this trigger Winter Soldier's trait? The answer is yes, because Winter Soldier's trait doesn't say that they have to move adjacent. It just says when the opposing character when an opposing character becomes adjacent. Roll a d6, blah, 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 blah. So TK doesn't really help you um, compared to charge or hypersonic or anything else. It's still gonna trigger the trait 24 seven. The last abstract question, but we've already had it, <laughs> one already, is if I am playing two Winter Soldiers on my team and I pop their net sniper nest tokens can I use um, all six tokens, and can they basically share the special terrain markers? The answer is no. And this is usually the, the answer for all characters who, um, who have powers like this where they, where they create something. When he's given the power action and he creates the terrain, those are specifically his. And it doesn't matter that a character named Winter Soldier is doing the same thing. Because if something in Winter Soldier's trait said when a character named Winter Soldier 
and somebody becomes adjacent to him, blah, 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 you can place him in a sniper, blah, blah, blah. That's not on there. This is, this is very specified to this specific figure. And I, I went ahead and looked it up, make sure I was right, and I am right uh, with the rules arbiters. So anytime that you have more than one Winter Soldier on your team, you should honestly just go ahead and use different special terrain markers. So if you pop it on this guy, use blue ones. If you pop it on the other guy, use something else. If you have different color special terrains, if not, use some kind of tokens or something. And each one can only use their specific ones. They cannot share. And lastly, I just want to cover tactics very quickly because I like to give you guys uh, tips along with the rules. So the first section will be what do I suggest if I am the one playing Winter Soldier? Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I would suggest not popping your um, your special your trait until you really need it. Um, you don't necessarily need to do it right at the beginning of the game. In fact, I think it's better to let your other your other couple characters move up, start fighting, uh, you know, tying other people up, and then popping your trait. Um, that way, the opponent has less time to plan how they're going to pop your markers. And you can tie up half of their team and really reduce the number of, of chances they have to destroy them. And which really maximizes your ability because the more you, you have to pop around, the easier it is to get line of fire and the more effective that Winter Soldier can be. Second thing you need to think about when you're playing him is placement of the uh, sniper nest once you pop them. It's good to have at least two of them on elevated if you can help it. So on this map, we've got elevated here and elevated over there. But remember the stairs scenario. So if we can avoid it, which we can, we want to not set it on the stairs. We want to set it here so that if someone comes up here, whether they fly or they go through the stairs, either way, they're going to trigger it and I may get a chance to get away. So we'll set one up there, one up there, and then set one pretty far away so that no matter what happens, you can cover all angles of the map because the worst thing to happen to Winter Soldier is if you get stuck with one um, square and you are completely away from all the action and you can't get out of it. Then the last little tip of advice, and this is something to keep in mind whether you're playing with him or against him, um, but if you're playing with him, remember you can't TK him away, but you can carry him. Uh, you can place him, you can, if you're already adjacent with the flyer or somebody can carry, carry him out of the nest if you need him to do running shot or you need him to do something besides RCE. So keep that in mind offensively and defensively. And then let's go over tactics defensively. If you're playing against a Winter Soldier, um, I, this whole video has kind of been showing you how to, how to play against him. The first thing is don't just focus on what nest he's in. Go and destroy the empty nest first. So if you're closer to this one, move your guy next to that one. You're either going to destroy it or you're going to make him have to move to a different one, which is what you want. Um, if you destroy two of the nests and you don't really have any guys next to him, then stay away from him. You know, fight the battle over around this area if you can help it and stay out of his range. And now he's stuck up there twiddling his thumbs because he can't do anything he can't move out of his marker. The only thing the opponent can do is carry him out of there with, a, with another flyer. Um, and then the other option is if you move up on a nest and you don't get lucky enough to destroy it, you can at least move on it and stand on there so that somebody else can move up and trap him. And so that when they move adjacent, no matter what Winter Soldier rolls, he can't break the rule of occupancy. He cannot teleport to one of those squares. So you can trap him and then punch him guaranteed no matter what he rolls. So those are just some tips with and against him. And uh, if you guys have any other questions regarding Winter Soldier or any other figures that you want me to, to uh, cover, just comment in the videos. Like and subscribe. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I put out videos weekly. We will have a Yu-Gi-Oh! unboxing coming next week. Hopefully that set comes out this weekend. It's only been delayed about five times now. And I wish I were exaggerating about that. Uh, so hopefully we'll have an unboxing of that this week. But regardless, be sure to check out our podcast, Dial Like Your Hero Clicks, every week on iTunes, uh, YouTube, and Podbean.com.